In this video, we will continue to learn alkene reactions. We will learn an easy way to predict products, just like in the last video, and specific reagents that are used for uh, specific alkene reactions. Let's say again that the reactions I'm showing you today start with an alkene, which means you must have a C double bond C to as the in your starting material to make these reactions happen. And the first reaction that we're going to learn is ozonolysis. There are two versions of ozonolysis. The first one is ozonolysis that happens under reductive conditions, and the second one will be ozonolysis that happens under oxidative conditions. The reagent for, for ozonolysis under reductive conditions is first step O3, second step could be any one of these reagents, so it could be zinc with water or CH32S, abbreviated as DMS by some professors, or H2PD, so any one of these uh, second steps would work. And here I wrote how to do this. So all we need to do is we will have to break the double bond in half to make two new double bonds, which is a little different from the other alkene reactions we learned. Most of them just turn double into a single bond. But here we will break it in half, and then we will add two oxygens, one on each carbon from the double bond. So let's go ahead and do this problem to see how to do it. This is my double bond, so I imagine breaking it in half. This is where my double bond was. Since I break it in half, I will get basically two new halves, two halves of the double bond, and I just add an oxygen on each side like this. It's looking ugly, but it's correct, so it's okay. I'm going to go ahead and number my molecule, one, two, three, four, five, and six, and I will redraw it more beautifully. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Numbering is always a really good idea. My number five has a double bond O, and my number one has a double bond O. So again, all we did is we found C double bond C, broke it in half, cut it, sliced it up in half, and put oxygen on each side of the double bond, the two new double bonds that were made. And then I just redrew it uh, in a more, in a nicer way, since it's no longer a ring. Now let's go ahead and do the next ozonolysis type. The second type is ozonolysis that happens under oxidative conditions. So under oxidative conditions, again, my first step will be O3, but the second step will be H2O2, HCOH. So it's very important to, if you have an ozonolysis, to look at what is the second step that is given to you. Is it reductive or is it oxidative? Because it might change products. Um, so here we basically do the same thing as we have done before. All we need to do is we need to see where the double bond is. Then we will have to break it into two halves and add two oxygens, one on each carbon from the double bond. But here there is something extra that you have to keep in mind. If you have an aldehyde and that's a double bond O at the end of the chain, you will have to convert it to carboxylic acid. So oxidative, so ozonolysis under oxidative conditions can give you carboxylic acids in the product, while uh, ozonolysis under reductive conditions will give you aldehydes, not carboxylic acids. So let's take a look at this problem. I see my C double bond. Oh, I mean, I'm sorry. I see my C double bond C here. I see my ozone under oxidative conditions. So I have to keep. Um, this in mind, what I just talked about, and basically I break my double bond into two halves, and I'm going to draw it. This is where my double bond was, so this will be the first half and the second half of the double bond. I attach oxygens. So right now I basically did what I have done before in the previous example, same thing, but here I have to ask myself, do I have an aldehyde? So let's take a look at each of these double bond O's. This double bond O is connected to two carbons, this and this. So it's a ketone. It's not at the end of the chain. So this one is fine. We can leave it alone. This double bond O is at the end of the chain. It's connected to a carbon, but what else is it connected to? It must be connected to a hydrogen. Therefore, this is an aldehyde. 
and I will have to make it into a carboxylic acid. So instead of H, I will have to make an OH. So let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oops, six. So I draw my six carbon chain. One, two, three, four, five, six. Numbering is very, very, very helpful in organic chemistry. Always, always number. Number two has double bond O. And number six has double bond O with a hydrogen. But we said this is a hydrogen. Under oxidative conditions, it becomes an OH. So I made a carboxylic acid. So looking at this example again, we see that we, we broke our double bond in half, attached oxygen on each side, but because one of the oxygen, what one of the double bond O's was at the end, it was an aldehyde. Under oxidative conditions, it will become a carboxylic acid. Okay, so that was our ozonolysis overview. Now let's go ahead and learn another reaction. In this case, we do alkene with OSO4 or KMNO4. I just want to let you know that depending on college and the professor, the reagents might vary slightly, and sometimes there are other reagents uh, together with this. So just keep it in mind as you're doing these problems and make sure to look at the reagents that your professor is giving you. Okay, so if I have alkene with OSO4 or KMNO4, this is how I predict my product. Basically, what I will have to do is I will have to turn the double bond into single and I will add two OHs, one on each carbon from where the double bond was. Stereo chemistry is syn. I misspell stereo chemistry here, sorry. Stereo chem. Mystery is cis or sin, but basically what that means is that both OHs will be wedges or dashes. So let's go ahead and take a look at my example here. I have a double bond and OSO4, so I'm going to follow my instructions. I wrote that we turn the double bond into single, then we add two OHs one on each carbon from the double bond. So these were the two carbons from the double bond. I'm going to add two OHs. And my OHs add sin, both wedges or both dashes. So my product could be either this. Basically, I will make two products. Both OHs wedges wedged and both edges, uh, OHs dashes. These are the two products that I make. Let's go ahead and continue to the next reaction. Alkene H2PT. PT is a catalyst. Sometimes they, uh, another famous one is alkene with H2PDC. So if you see H2PDC, it's also one of these. And there are other catalysts as well. So look at your professor's notes. For this reaction, all I have to do is I have to turn my double bond into a single bond by adding two hydrogens, one on each carbon from the double bond, and the two hydrogens add syn, meaning both wedges or both dashes. So sometimes, honestly, like you, you don't even have to show the hydrogens, but if you do show them, so I'm going to show the two hydrogens, they could be either, for example, like this. And then the methyl groups, if the hydrogen is dashed, that means the methyl group next to it would be wedged. So this one would be my product. If you have to show stereochemistry. Okay, let's go ahead and continue to the next reaction. Alkene with CH2N2. In this case, all we have to do is we will turn double bond into single and we will connect two carbons from a double bond to a carbon forming a cyclopropane. Basically, you are going to make a triangle. So let's see. This is my example. This is my double bond alkene. These are the two carbons that had the double bond. And I'm going to attach them to another carbon forming a cyclopropane. I call it the triangle. It's not actually called the triangle, but that's what it looks like to help you memorize the reaction better. And the last reaction we will learn is a very, very famous reaction. It's called hydroboration. 
because it has a boron inside. For this reaction, the reagents are first step BH3CHF, and then second step we have H2O2 with OH minus. For this reaction, what will happen is we will have to turn double bond into a single bond and we will have to add OH on the least, and I emphasize least substituted carbon from the double bond. So I'm going to go ahead and look at this reaction. These are the two carbons that had the double bond. This carbon is connected to one, two, three carbons, so it's tertiary. This carbon is connected to one, two carbons, so it's secondary. Since this carbon is connected to more carbons, it's more substituted, and this carbon is less substituted. In this reaction, it is very unique but we're going to get OH on the least substituted carbon from the double bond. So we're going to get OH here. The other carbon will get a hydrogen, but I don't have to show hydrogen, so I'm not going to show it. But the most important thing for you to know is that OH in hydroboration adds to the least substituted carbon. It's a rare reaction because there are only a, a couple of reactions we learned where something adds to the least substituted carbon. Uh, usually almost everything is added to the most substituted carbon. So if you ever have to do synthesis or predict the reagents, if you see that you have an alcohol that was added to the least substituted carbon, there is a very high chance that a hydroboration was used there. This is Maya from Transformation Tutoring. I hope you enjoyed my video and I hope to see you more in more of my general chemistry and organic chemistry videos.